Whoa, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 200 and fuck you mum of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, it's hot. It's very, very hot. It is currently Sunday. I should have plugged my fucking laptop in. I'm going to do it right now, okay? Yes, I should probably fucking restart the episode. Oh my God. Where is the... Hang on, one second. Sorry, guys. I know. I understand this isn't the best ep- the best uh, start to the episode. In fact, I, I understand this is probably a terrible uh, beginning to the episode, but, but also uh, I, I would also like to ask you a very important question. As soon as I find my laptop charger, I, I have a very, very important question for you. I'm coming up, almost got it plugged in, and I have a very important question. As soon as I plug it in, it's plugged in. And now it's charging and it's not going to die. And I have a very important question for you. And that question is, what the fuck did you expect coming onto this podcast? That to not happen? You're wrong. Uh, welcome. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's very hot. It's fucking, oh, it's, not, it's summer right now, isn't it? I don't know. It's fucking 30, 40 degrees. I am sweaty as hell. I just finished off a stream. Uh, we unboxed all the Pokemon cards, bro. Turns out I have insane luck. Every time I look at the cards I pulled, I feel like a rapper spreading their money. I got the Pikachu V Max. Uh, I got the fucking. Uh, I got the uh, the the Opal Secret Rare Togekiss V Max. I got like a. I think I paid for the box that I bought. You know, so so that's really good. You know, not too often do you get into a box and get, find your money. You know, that's more of a Grand Theft Auto thing. You know. <laughs> um. Right, so I'm I'm happy to be here. I, I need to address a few things. Obviously, uh, I've had uh, I've had a great week. Had a very productive week. One of the most productive weeks all year. Finally, it is working. It is spinning. It is happening. Uh, three main channel videos this week. Two streams. Two podcasts. This podcast. Haven't missed an episode, uh, and it's all firing on all all cylinders right up until we you know I think one or two weeks more and then we take Christmas break and then it's all going to crumble again and then we got to spin it all up but it is happening and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here and uh, I'm happy to be building a system that will work <clears throat> as long as we can do it in person basically that is what's happening and I'm, and I'm happy that you guys have stuck around we're getting back on stage as well we kind of started to fold in stand up into the mix and it hasn't crumbled which is amazing been doing great on stage. Uh, I've started posting stand-up clips again. Uh, posted probably my only stand-up clip for the year, unless something else, you know, timely and amazing happens. Uh, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I fucking hate the internet. I hate Twitter. I hate TikTok. I hate uh, everything. I, I hate you. I hate me. I hate every single cunt on this fucking platform. Any pl- on any platform. No, I, I like you guys because you guys are great, but dear God, I've been dealing with some of the dumbest people on the planet. In fact, I can't even call them dumb. It's not even their fault, right? I'll tell you what happened. So, this is a little bit my fault as well. So, obviously, I've been living in a world for an entire year where I can't do stand-up comedy. So, whenever I think of, like, a timely joke... Uh, or a joke about current news that's funny now and might not be funny in a year, I have just been getting into the habit of putting it out there straight away, tweeting it, putting it on YouTube, putting it in here, any type of joke that I think won't be funny in a year when stand-up will be properly rolling, I just put it out. And I've been doing that all year, and the online shit's been growing, and it's been going great. TikTok's blowing up, all that kind of shit. However, stand-up came back... Uh, at the time, a, w- a few days before I tweeted this out, right? So I'm still in the headspace of anything funny and timely, get it out there because it won't be funny by the time you can perform it. And I send out a tweet, right, about something timely that I probably should have saved for the stage. Not that this makes this okay, but it does. it is an error on my part. I probably shouldn't have trusted the fucking internet, okay? So I tweeted out, Something along the lines of, let me get the exact wording because I do think that is fucking important. So I tweeted out, here, I have it on my Instagram. I put out, I'm sure you saw it because you've seen it fucking everywhere since. I said, I don't like the idea of England trying the vaccine first. If there's a side effect that causes deformities, we won't notice, right? Very funny. I tweeted that. I recorded myself saying it on TikTok. Put it out. TikTok, half a million views. The tweet from all the places that it was posted again. So probably like maybe a few million people have seen this joke. Then one woman on Twitter in America either saw my tweet or my TikTok. I'm not sure. I actually think she probably saw my TikTok, right? 
saw the TikTok, reworded it, tweeted it out on her Twitter, stole my joke, word for word, changed a couple of words to just synonyms, right? So still pretty much word for word. And then uh, replied to her tweet with a bunch of products to buy, which seems to be a thing on Twitter to make money. Like you steal tweets, they go viral, you reply to the viral tweets with, check out these awesome products, you get a kickback, right? So obviously she's just doing that. And I had to scroll through her profile. She's not a comedian. She's not funny. She's never had a viral tweet before. She has never have, hasn't had any indication of being a funny person in a way that would make me go, oh, I guess we just thought of the same thing. Because that's not crazy, you know. That's, sometimes that does happen. I've done that to people. People have done that to me. I've looked at it and gone, oh, that's very similar, but I know I didn't steal it. Or, oh, that's very similar, but I feel like they didn't steal it because I'm pretty sure they could have thought of it too. It has happened. It does happen. It is the internet. However, in this instance, it, that is not what happened. Absolutely for sure. Because a bunch of people start tagging me in the tweet. They go, hey, this is Lewis's joke. This is Lewis's joke. She stole this from me. It starts getting a lot of retweets. It starts going viral. It starts going bigger than mine, bigger than the original, which starts making me angry. People start replying, going, this is stolen. This is not yours, blah, blah, blah. Find the original creator here. Not abusing her. I didn't see anyone say, fuck you. And then she... Uh, starts blocking people. And then I, I, I go, all right, well, then if you're going to do that, that is like the ultimate sign of guilt, yeah? Like if if someone, every now and then, maybe once a year, someone will go, oh, this is not your joke. And I'll I'll explain how I've thought of it. Or I'll go, oh, I guess it's just pretty similar. I If I block that person, that means I stole it. 100%, right? If, if someone calls me out on shitty behavior and I block them, uh, if, if they weren't being abusive about it, it's pretty much a, yeah, I did that shit, but I don't want anyone to know. So, because it kind of hides your tweet, I think is how Twitter works. Is if you block someone for replying to your tweet, it kind of hides the replies. It but makes it, it's still visible, but it's, you're just not going to see it unless you look for it. So she starts doing that. So I go, all right, well, time to engage the nuclear bomb. And I fucking quote retweet it. And I go, you stole this. It's the exact same word, blah, 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 all this kind of shit. And I make fun of her, you know, still not, not abusing, just, hey, just letting the people know that's my fucking work. That's my art. You stole that from me. I, that's how I pay my bills. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, I'm like, oh, fuck, I should have fucking done that on stage. I shouldn't have. When my tweet went viral, I was like, oh, great. That'll be a good bit to do on stage. And then I can record it. And then maybe the stand-up clip will go viral even better. But after that, her shit goes viral. And then what happens is people start taking her tweet. All of these meme pages start screenshotting her stolen joke, putting it on Instagram and crediting her as the original. I was like, what the fuck? Now... Her tweet has like tens of thousands of retweets and it has literally millions and millions of likes on Instagram, Facebook, this, that. It was posted to fucking iFunny, right? So I'm like, whatever. It's my fucking joke. I'm going to do it on stage. And I didn't realize at when I was going to record it, I'd, I'd only seen it going viral, viral on Twitter. I didn't realize it was all over Insta, iFunny, all these other fucking websites. It got front page of fucking Reddit, I found out, the stolen screenshot after the fact, right? So anyway, while this is happening, unbeknownst to me, I go out to the comics lounge and I do my second set. By the way, fucking destroyed. I've It's coming back. I'm not 100% of the way there, but bro, I'm a lot better than I thought I would be, right? So I go and I do the bit and it goes really well um, for the amount of people that are allowed to be in the venue because it is reduced capacity. So the laughter in the clip sounds a little bit empty, but that's because it's 550 seat theater and there was 160 people allowed in it. So it sounds a little bit empty and everyone's split apart, but in the room it smashed, right? I go, I do it, I perform it. And then I, re Keelan records it. We edit it up. We chuck it up as a reel and a TikTok the next day. And then my comments are bombarded by well-meaning fools going, uh, you stole this joke from iFunny. I saw this joke on Reddit. I'm pretty sure you took this from uh, some black girl in America on Twitter. Uh, the, the, just pointing out, and to your guys' credit, you guys went to fucking war for me. That is really, really why I treat you guys with so much respect, and I really do care about you guys and your perception of me, and I care about giving you the most value for for your money or for your attention or just doing as much as I can for you and creating as much as I can because when 
stuff goes to hell, you guys really have my back. And that is something that I can always count on and I never even have to ask for. That's another thing. A lot of the a lot of people, when they ask their fans to support them, their fans go, fuck you, why should I help you? A lot of the time, I don't even need to ask. You guys will just stand up and go, looks like he needs my help. I'll fix him up. I'll sort him out. No worries. I'll stand up for him. I'll fight for him. So many people took the time to not only reply in a polite and like, you know, not a mean way to these people that were like, ah, I've seen this before. Is this your joke? And explained the situation and then have those people who were calling me out go, oh, well, that's fucking bullshit. Fuck these other people. I'm going to support the real guy. I started gaining followers off people who initially saw it and was like, fuck this guy. From you guys going, well, actually, it looks like that, but here's how it actually happened. He's the original guy, just wasn't seen as, much, as by as many people, right? So thank you very much, first and foremost, for that. I really do appreciate it if that was you. But then you guys were going above and beyond finding all of the stolen versions because at this point, right, after I post my the stand-up version of it, right, uh, it's gone. The stolen tweet has gone so fucking viral that it's like one of the biggest jokes I've written in terms of impact other than, you know, maybe like the stunt videos that I've done. It's fucking everywhere. iFunny, Reddit, every Instagram page you can think of, every meme page. You guys go out of your way to every time it's seen tagging me in it going, this is Lewis's joke, this is stolen, letting everybody know, hey guys, check it out, this is stolen, this is the original guy. I start getting followers off that. Obviously not as many as I would have if I was the original fucking credited person, but still, it, amazing, right? Thank you for that also. Uh, and it, it fucking shits me. Now, initially, I, I, I was kind of prepared to give this girl the benefit of the doubt because it is, you know, calling British people ugly and weird looking and then applying the vaccine joke to that. That's not that crazy. It's The reason why it was so stealable was because it's funny no matter who says it. And those are the jokes that go the best, but also can be thought of by multiple people, right? Because it's just a relatable thought and makes people go, Haha, yeah, because they can connect the dots without having to do much thinking. It's like the perfect short little joke to go viral, right? So initially I was prepared to give her the benefit of the doubt, but then after I called her out and after you guys called her out, she installs a script on her Twitter account to block every single Twitter account that follows me. I'm not joking about this. I'm pretty sure she used some kind of program that blocked every single one of my followers, which what, 25,000 cunts of you just blocked for nothing over the off chance that maybe you might see the joke and go, actually, this is Lewis's, you fucking thief, right? And she sent something at me that was like, oh, who gives a fuck? It's just a joke. Even if I did take it, who cares? That's reparations. And this is why I care so much about fucking joke theft. Because this is the the actual real impact that happens. It doesn't happen. It happens a lot of... Actually, you know what? I was going to say it doesn't happen too often. It happens a lot to me where I will tweet something, I'll make a TikTok, and it gets stolen. I had even people rewording my TikTok, my stand-up bit, in the comment sections of other TikToks. Like uh, Blake Pavey, TikTok guy, he makes some video about the vaccine in Britain and then someone else comments my joke pretty much word for word again and then he just replies, haha, yeah, Lewis is pretty funny, isn't he? And then the commenter was like, oh, you got me. It's like fucking rampant and that's harmless, right? But it's the attitude of like you see something, you take something, you tweet it out yourself and you think nothing happens. You go, you go get all these fucking retweets but the impact of it to the original person who wrote it is, you know, Best case scenario, I don't, I don't get the shine that I should for my writing material and you make money and get success, which should have been rightly mine or the joke writers uh, initially, right? That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is what happened to me is the stolen version goes more viral and then people start treating the original writer as a joke thief, which is which makes me so fucking mad, but I really do appreciate everyone that stood up for it. I know this isn't, this isn't the funniest thing, but I, I do think it's interesting to, to kind of like point out the impact of this stuff because a lot of people don't give a fuck and a lot of people don't also don't notice how, how much benefit uh, the original creators receive from 
normal people like you calling it out when you see it. Because it's so easy for you to do. Oh, this is fucking Sam's joke. This is fucking Tim's joke. Like comments like that seriously make such a big impact because it's one thing for me to go, hey, everyone that already follows me, this is mine. Of course, all of you guys will go, oh, well, that's his joke. But what I lose is all of the strangers, all of the people that that liked my style of humor that could have gone on to my shit uh, and found more of it and then maybe see a show, buy a T-shirt, this, that. You know, we're in a fucking pandemic. It's hard for everybody. Um, but that's, that's the shit that you lose and, but you can get those people back on board when otherwise they would disappear forever by normal people in the comments going, good joke, but this is Lewis's or, Hey, if you guys like this humor, you should check out Lewis. You know, so, so often people will post screenshots of the vaccine video and the comments will be full of this guy's great. His name's Lewis Spears. He has a bunch of other videos and that literally works. An uncredited, like st- not stolen because it's a screenshot. I don't, I don't would really, I wouldn't really call that stolen because it's not like they haven't pretended that it's theirs. But just a screenshot that has my face, no name, and then the comments being full of this is Lewis Spears. This is Lewis Spears makes people go, oh, I should fucking check out this stuff. This single frame of video was funny. I should check out his other stuff. And those people turn into genuine fans and they come to shows. And when stuff is stolen, you miss out on that opportunity. Um, so to everyone who stood up for it and everyone who fucking said it, thank you very much. Because the, the hard thing is, you know, the bigger that I get and the more content I put out and, and the more often my shit is stolen and the bigger that goes, uh, I had like some of, some people who already followed me, like my fans go, hey, Lewis, I like you, but I don't think it's cool for you to be just re-saying jokes on iFunny. Like genuinely disappointed fans of mine going, ah, I don't think you should do this. So I have to fucking write, you know, paragraphs going, I posted my joke on Twitter here. You can see the date. They posted it there. You can see the date. Then it made it to iFunny. You saw it. Then I recorded it for stage, posted it. And now you're here after the fact when you've seen the stolen version. That was actually my joke. And you're seeing the stand-up version of it. Bang. And and it's like, that is so annoying. But to have like thousands of you guys, you know, politely just letting people know, hey, this is not yours. This is this guy's. You can find more of his stuff here. It makes such a fucking big difference. And that is why I... I I love you guys so much. So thank you very much. Um, Lesson learned for me, honestly. Like that is a a big eye opener for me. I can't put good shit out. If I can't, I literally cannot put good, well-written jokes on Twitter. I can't put them on TikTok. It's, it it is just too dangerous because that's what happens. You know, those uh, with my standup clip, if I didn't tweet that, if I just did that on stage and I made it a reel, I made it a TikTok, fuck man, who knows what could have happened? I think that is my lesson my lesson learned basically is is that I really need to stop posting good things on Twitter uh, which is a shame so it's just going to go back to garbage guys now that stand up's back my Twitter is going to suffer I think the YouTube's still going to be funny cuz most of that film these days is just uh, ad libs to be honest I'm like just writing down dot points of ideas of jokes and we turn the camera on and I just go and then we chop it down it's almost like a podcast we've got to that level of um workflow and and uh, uh so so that's that's what it's gonna have to be lesson learned man i'm never tweeting anything good again so uh better unfollow me now <laughs> um but thank you very much i am very grateful for, for to everyone who's fucking stood up for it and i'm sorry to yell about it for 20 minutes i just wanted to say thanks and i wanted to explain the situation uh to anyone who may have missed all of that kind of stuff um Right. Uh, speaking of uh, what we're working on, dude, uh, the the content is is really really rolling. Keelan and I have been fucking knuckling down. I think that quarantine really really got us moving. Uh, not during quarantine, but it really got us going. All right. Well, this has fucked like six months of our workflow, so we can't do the content like we want to be doing it like two, three videos a week. But what we can do is we can plan and get ready and figure out how to do that when we're back next year. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? You know, get the team solid, figure out who can do what, what should we delegate to all of that kind of stuff. Um, Sorting out the business, me going hands off with a lot of my business stuff like shipping and 
uh, uh, customer service emails and all that kind of stuff where we're handing off to other people, people that I trust, obviously, and people that I train, but we're really trying to get me to a point where all I am doing is writing and performing videos, stand up, so that we can create the best fucking content the fastest way and the most efficient way and the highest quality way possible so that next year, bro, we've got some fucking plans that are going to blow your mind. Um, we're going to bring back bi-monthly bull. As soon as quarantine happened, I was like, oh, quarant- bi-monthly bull is a fucking wash. There's no way we can do this regularly. We either do it uh, sporadically and promise things and don't deliver or we figure out a system so that when we start, it doesn't stop. We've got that system. We've got the people that we're going to uh, bring on board to help with that. And we figured out a routine and a way to plan and execute on content that is going to fucking blow your minds. And that's starting off like January next year. We're going to take a little holiday uh, at the end of December like everybody else. But as soon as we're back, bro, we are fucking back. Um, Luke and Lewis, we've been uh, we've been uh, we've been in talks with some very important people, some very cool people. Some of you can probably guess at it. I've left some hints here and there, but Luke and Lewis is really, really. We've got some amazing news. I'm not going to even, you know, say what it is, but but next year, bro, shit's going to be different, uh, and uh, we're elevating as always. Spearhead Sundays is is. I'm going to be real with you. It's going to be the same that it always is, and that's all I'm going to promise you. Me yelling chair. That's it. <laughs> Me, Chair Yelly. Once a week, bang. Uh, but that's, uh, uh, I'm, I feel very, very hopeful about 2021. It looks like stand-up shows are going to be back. It looks like I'm definitely going to be doing the festival. I don't know what venue. I reckon I'm going to, I really want to do like a full run, man. I've never done a full run. The longest I've ever done is like a half run, which is only about 12 shows in a row. I want to do the big boy 24 night in a row run. That's what I want to do to get myself back up to speed. Dude, I was supposed to fucking record a comedy special. I was in peak form last year. I'm still good. I'm better than I thought I would be. But, bro, I, I'm rusty. I'm not going to lie. I need to get up to speed. The best way to do that, 24 nights in a fucking row, man. Film them all. Farm stand-up clips for the entire year. I got, man, I am so excited about 2021. I know I said this about last year, but hopefully, you know, Lord have mercy on us. Hopefully 2021 is our year, bro, where we have the real blow up. I've been growing consistently all year. I've had a few viral moments. The start of the year was incredible for me, but dude, 2021 is where it's at. I got big plans and I cannot wait uh, to, to bring you on to it. Um, now, enough talking about what's being done and what will be done. Let's talk about uh, this. I wanted to talk... Um, uh, oh, before we get into that, I want to let you guys know that, uh, sorry, one thing that I must plug, uh, Matteo Mazzella, the artist who designs all of my show posters and uh, all of my merch, uh, he's the guy that designed the Death Threats Don't Scare Me poster, the DVD cover, absolutely fucking everything in the merch as well. He uh, is actually uh, trying to raise some money for his individual projects, and he is one way he decided to do that is he's actually going to sell on eBay. It is on sale right now. Some original death threats. Don't scare me. Hand drawn artwork that we used, um, to create the poster, create the merch. Uh, now if you have a look on eBay, there is a link in the description of this video and the podcast and in the top comment as well. The, the eBay link is up. You can start bidding on it. Now this is hand drawn art, hand drawn, original art. How he works is he draws it, by hand, with pencil, with whatever he uses, and then he scans it into a program and then we build it out from there. So this is like as original as original gets. Uh, death threats don't scare me work. So if you want a piece of history, man, of the you know the biggest crowdfunded comedy special in the world still to this fucking day, um, it is uh, available to bid now. You've got about 10 days, place your bids now. Fuck, I'm, I'm going to be placing a bid on it. I think it's cool. I think it's great. And Mateo's going to be using the money to fund further creative projects of him. He's of his, he's a very talented person and I can't wait to work with him uh, together again, whenever shows and tours and all that kind of stuff are back properly. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it's a really, really cool piece of art and you should check it out now. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about cyberpunk. Am I, I might be the only person on the planet that doesn't give a flying fuck at all about cyberpunk. I know what it is. I've looked at it. I've watched trailers. I saw the John Wick thing. 
Not John Wick. That's not his fucking name. What's his name? John Wick. I saw that. Fucking goldfish, bro. God. Keanu Reeves. How did I forget his name? I love him. Anyway, I saw Keanu, Keanu Reeves. I saw the graphic shit. I saw the gameplay. I understand the concept. I don't give a fuck at all about a game that has been delayed that much, okay? What is with it? Now, I'm sure that when they finish the game, it's going to be the best game of all time, but it's not finished, is it? Okay? What is with all these fucking game developers releasing unfinished games? They need to shut the fuck up and stop promising anything, and then when it's done, then they go, all right, now we're going to think about marketing it. What is with all these fucking developers going, oh, it's going to be the best game of all time and it's coming out tomorrow and they release it and it's like two pixels, pixels, it's fucking Pong and they go, oh, there's more features coming soon. Why have we as the consumer allowed that to happen? Let's be real. This is our fault. Pre-ordering games, dumbest shit ever. Only ever pre-order physical products. I really do think that you cannot be fucking pre-ordering games. Actually, music is fine. Everything seems to be fine except for video games because these scummy studios bend over their fucking uh, developers, fuck them in the ass so hard that they cry while they're making the game, get them to do crunch. They don't. They barely even finish the game. It's only at like a, a kind of playable state and then the studios make them release it because we pay for it and then we go, where's the fucking game? Where's the game? I paid $60. Where's the game? Don't fucking pre-order it, you dickhead. You're going to get a broken game. I don't understand why... I don't pre-order games. I've never done it. I actually know. I used to do it. I've learned my lesson. And now I don't do it anymore. And I don't understand why people do it. People are buying unfinished games. Oh, it's in beta. Okay, when's it going to be done? Huh? I'm looking at Cyberpunk 2077. Hey, I'm sure when it works, it looks great. But it's not done, is it? You're like opening the oven halfway through and eating a cake that's like half raised and going, oh, this is amazing because I spent $60 on it. It's like you're eating flour. That's not a cake yet. Sure, there's sugar in it and, and you might take a bite every now and then. It's fucking good. But the rest of it is fucking hell. It's not done. I don't understand it. I don't understand why we as consumers let these big fucking studios let well, I don't know why we let them release unfinished shit and go, thank you, sir. May I have another? Stop pre-ordering games. You're dumb. These fucking companies, and I'm, it's, I'm sure it's not the developer's fault. I'm not trying to shit on the developers. I'm sure they've been bent over by the studio. They had to deal with crunch time. They fucking were given an unrealistic deadline, I bet. Uh, but at the end of the day, that is because we pre-order stuff and then complain when it's late rather than go, oh, what, rather than complain when it's not finished, you know? We make a big deal about games being done on a deadline that we were given that was fucking arbitrary and a best-case scenario thing that was just given to us so we would pre-order it. We pre-order it, and instead of being like, oh, great, I, w I would love to play that whenever you finish it, we go, why isn't it given to me on the fucking date even though it's unfinished? Give it to me now. It's like, dude, 10 more minutes, it'll be done. I want to eat glue. It's like, what are you doing? I don't understand that shit. It looks unfinished. I'm sure it'll be great when it's done, but it's not done. You know? I, I look at that shit on the fucking PS4. Why was it released on PS4? And all these fucking idiots are complaining, right? No. Normal people are complaining that it doesn't work on PS4. It looks like shit. It looks like Pong, right? It's fucking... It looks less good than Minecraft. Textures aren't loading. It looks like rubbish. It barely looks playable. I've looked at gameplay on PS4 and Xbox fucking One or whatever the previous generation is, right? It looks unplayable and morons in the comment section are calling the people who bought the game stupid for buying it on a PS4. Oh, you're dumb. You're playing it on a PS4. Cunt, it was released on PS4. Why is it my fault that I bought something that doesn't work? That's the fucking studio's fault or whoever made that decision to release it on a fucking PS4 for money. Imagine blaming the consumer that they got a product that doesn't work. Oh, you fucking idiot. Why did you buy it on a PS4? I don't know, because they put it on PS4 and I have one? <laughs> I... 
will never cease to be surprised at how angry I get things about things that don't affect me at all. I don't own the game. I don't have a PS4. I'm not even going to buy the game, even though I have a PC that can run it. I have no vested interest in this at all, but I'm really angry at strangers that aren't even interacting with me. Did you notice that I'm angrier about this than I am about the fucking joke theft that happened to me? I had something stolen from me and I think this is worse and it doesn't affect me at all. I'm not involved. I won't even be negatively affected by it at all. I've been playing the Pokemon trading card online game, which is basically a fucking web browser. Loving it. But I see Cyberpunk 2077 and I'm getting angry about it. I'm not even going to buy the game. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just I just don't understand. It, it frustrates me that we have let that happen to us. You know? Like, why would these game companies not do that if they can raise millions and millions of dollars before a game is even finished? Like, why the fuck would they not do that? We're dumb enough and gullible enough to fucking pre-order shit off some, like, trailer that isn't even a gameplay trailer. Oh, fuck, the cinematic they made for it looks good. Have $100. I wonder when it'll work. Idiot. What are you doing? Don't give them money. Don't give cunts money for a fucking product that you don't even know if it works. That's like buying something off eBay where they go, oh, fucking, uh, I've got a PSA 10 shadowless base set first printing Charizard card. That'll be $50,000, please. And you go, oh, I'm interested in that card. Can I have a photo? And they go, no. And you're like, oh, I'll just pre-order it then. Have my money. And then you just don't get it for 10 months. It arrives and it's bent, ripped in half. It's a Bulbasaur. And you're like, oh, thank you very much. That's your fault. You got scammed. Don't believe, don't pre-order shit off a cinematic fucking trailer. You know, when I released a trailer for my comedy special, guess what was in there? Stand-up! Imagine if I put no stand-up in my trailer. The comments that I would have gotten would be insane. Like, how, why would I buy this? I don't know if it's any good. I put jokes in there. Sure, cinematics are cool. I love cinematics, but I don't pre-order based off them. I want to see gameplay. I want to see half an hour of unedited gameplay, bro. Show me that shit or you don't get my money. <laughs> anyway, guys, I pulled a Pikachu VMAX in my unboxing stream. That's fucking incredible. Dude, I love Pokemon cards. I've fallen down the rabbit hole. They are so sick. The art of them is really nice. I find myself just looking at my cards. I don't even know how rare they are. I don't really know how much they're worth other than the Pikachu, which I think is worth like 50 to, you know, 500, depending on how, if it gets graded as a PSA 10 or not. I literally am just looking through the artwork of the cards and going, man, these are nice. I like them. They're art. That's what really sold it for me. The, the online game is fun. I love playing the online game. I'm going to go scan in all of the codes I got from my booster box. But when I worked out that, that, it, that it's art, I was like, oh, great. It's art that I can fucking collect. I can have my favorites. It's nostalgic. I can put them in a folder and then maybe in 10, 20 years, I could sell them and make heaps of money or I could keep them and make my kids go, wow, it's fucking cool. And it's a relatively cheap hobby to get into unless you want to buy all of the vintage stuff in which case, good luck to your fucking wallet. You won't be able to afford to pre-order games that don't work. Good luck to you. Um, speaking of money, guys, uh, this week's episode of the podcast is sponsored by Manscaped, genuinely the best fucking razor in the game. Manscaped.com, guys, make sure you grab yourself a razor. I do have a promo code for you. Uh, it's an electric razor. Uh, I use it every couple of weeks. It keeps me looking nice. Uh, I'm, I'm not getting cut. I, I've been using it for fucking, I don't know, four months now, and uh, it's brilliant. I really like it, and I stand by it, and honestly, it's just fucking good, dude. Um, let's have a look here at uh, what we're saying. Um, I, have, I have a bit of copy here. I know you guys like me reading the copy, so I will be doing that. I just need to uh, figure out what my code is because I have, I'm not going to lie, I have forgotten it. Uh, uh, what is it? Is it Spears? Uh, fucking... What is it? Is it loose spears? It could be loose spears. It's for 20% off and free shipping. So you would think that that's quite a good fucking code. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm finding it. I'm finding it. Uh, 
here's the guy. I'm getting my email up. Like, you know, I should I should have this already. I'm sure he's not very happy with it. Please buy the razor because this is just absolutely unacceptable behavior. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. 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 Guys. Right. Spears. Use code Spears for 20% off in free shipping. Fuck, that's that's my second name, cunt. How did I fucking forget that? That is literally my name. Use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. Are you looking for the ultimate stocking stu stuffer for this uh, holiday season? Look no further because our sponsor, my sponsor, Manscaped, have the tools to make you win this year's stocking stuffer or white elephant competition. Manscaped is the only brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene products. They've got stuff for your balls to make them stop smelling. Uh, uh, good on you if you need that. Go get some. Manscaped.com. Code Spears. Um, and great news. They've just released their pot products across Europe, Canada, and Australia. Do not read. Host to talk about how you personally enjoy the products. You could talk about how Manscaped has changed the way you care for your balls. If female and enjoy our products, you can mention how you use it too. Uh, look, I'm not female, but I do use them every day. Uh, the other day, I shaved my armpits with them. I'm going to be real with you. I don't like having shaven armpits, but if you if you guys do, it worked great. Didn't cut me. It wasn't itchy. All day, I, I preferred having long hair, but it was worth a shot. I thought I should fucking try. I do, however, shave my nipples, and that's great, and my balls. So, I mean, I don't know what else you want from me. I'm a frequent user of the products. My balls look great. Not only that, mate, they got a weed whacker, nose and ear hair trimmer, which provides proprietary skin-safe technology to get rid of those nasty nose hairs. If you got a fucking nose that looks like my balls, fix that. Actually, you know what? If you have a nose, if you got the inside of a nose that used to look like my balls, mate, you got to catch up to my nuts. Manscape that shit. Get rid of those hairs. Uh, what else? We got the Shears 2.0, a luxury four-piece nail kit that I actually love. Where is it? I got that here. Um, this will be the last thing I say, and then uh, you got to go and use my codes. Code Spears, twenty percent off and free shipping. Uh, this fucking kit is actually really, really great. Uh, how does it open? Magnet. I'm taking this on tour with me. It's got a fucking nail clippers. It's got tweezers. It's got scissors. It's got a file, uh, and it just pulls out of the case like that. Uh, it's all magnetized. Sounds nice. Looks cool. I'm gonna chuck that in my bag when I go on tour because I always need that shit. I'll be. I'll get into. I'll get into like week three and I'll be like, fuck. I need to cut my fingernails and my toenails. I don't have anything. I can't buy anything. Where am I? Uh, I'm, I've got this problem solved. Uh, and it's a cool thing to just fucking, you know, if you're traveling or just in your house, you need one of these in your house. I, I lost my fucking toenail clippers the other day and I, it was such a fuck around to buy some. Um, and we had to buy shitty ones from the chemist and then these arrived and I don't use the other ones anymore. So I don't know what else to say, man. Manscaped.com, Spears for 20%, use code Spears for 20% off and free shipping. They support me, uh, which supports the show and, uh, keeps everything free and, uh, uncensored for you cunt. So go and get it. Thank you to Manscaped. All right. Um, dude, uh, episode 225 of the podcast is coming up and, uh, I really did try my best to get Cursor on this. A few people commented, bro, how cool would it be to get Cursor on episode 225? And I tried my best. Just didn't work. Uh, I've been talking with him. We're definitely going to do an episode. Uh, it just didn't work uh, because of fucking COVID restrictions. They, the border's just open. Flights are expensive. He's busy. Uh, it's just not a good time for me to be fucking going into state, especially with, you know, the loogies coming up and live shows coming back. So we, we talked about it. We are going to make it work next year. Hopefully uh, around March is what he was thinking. It's 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 definitely going to happen. We've talked about it so many times. I mean, for fuck's sake, the universe is really stacked against us. The first time we we're going to do the podcast, uh, I think uh, some bullshit happened. The second time uh, I was in Sydney, he got arrested on the way there, which is the most gangster shit ever, let's be real. And then now the third time we were going to do it, then the pandemic happened. And then the fourth time the borders opened just enough, but then it's fucking Christmas time. So it, we, it is cursed. But when it happens, it'll be fucking curse. Um, all right, so that's that's going to happen. Look forward to that. I got no promises about when it's going to happen, though. Um, I wanted to talk about this execution stuff. Think about it a little bit more, uh, something a bit more light. Uh, the death penalty in America. Uh, I think my, my thoughts on the, because this, this last case with this guy, 
uh, this black guy who, who was just executed, sadly, um, has, has been everywhere on socials. I'm sure you've seen the man's face uh, and uh, it, it's, shame, it's a shame that he's died. I, I'm, I'm, I'm conflicted about it, to be honest. I think the death penalty shouldn't exist because we basically know how to keep someone in prison for the rest of their life if they can't be rehabilitated. I think that prison should be for rehabilitating people and I think that executing people, no matter what they have done, even if they're a danger to society, even if they've done something terrible, even if they're non-remorseful, uh, just makes us uh, as bad as them. Uh, I just don't think it's good and I think we can do better than that and I think that with that we can keep people like that, even if they are a danger, even if they aren't remorseful, even if they would be, be violent around other people, we can keep them by themselves. We can uh, jail them humanely and keep society safe from them and keep them safe from themselves well enough. I don't think we should be killing people. However, some people do things that are so fucking horrific. Even I go, yeah, get rid of them. They're not, they're, they're, there's no way they're going to rehabilitate. Get get rid of them. I have that. I, those are my two conflicting thoughts. But I think the moral and right thing, which is what society, who, the people in charge should be all the time, is to just not do it. I don't think it's good. Um, this execution has uh, got me thinking that way. So this guy was basically, I'm not going to go too far into what he did because I do think it's kind of irrelevant to the discussion of death penalty, but I would like to note that the way that the news has been positing this thing is like it's a racist thing, is like it's uh, a positive thing that everyone's fighting for, that this guy is basically being, it, it's, it's being posited like the dude's wrongfully accused. First of all, he definitely did that shit. Second of all, I had to go through like five different articles to find out what he did. I was reading it going, this is horrible. It has to be stopped. You know, this is an, 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 an injustice. And it took me five articles to find out. Hang on a second. None of these articles have mentioned what he did. So what he did must be pretty fucking bad if they're trying to spin this as a horrible thing from happening. What he did must have been pretty horrible. And I won't go too far into it, but basically he was involved in a double murder where someone was burned alive in their car. So it's like, okay, this, this dude, the dude's not a saint. Fair enough. I'm sure he repented. I'm sure he would never do something like that again. And I do think that it is fucked that he went to prison. But if we, re that, sorry, that he was executed, I think that's bad. But if we're going to have a discussion about it, we need to at least acknowledge the other side, which is, hey, look at all these horrible things that he did. We need to get rid of him. How can we argue against something if we're not even going to acknowledge the other side's argument? We can't fucking go, the death penalty is bad, and then be surprised when the other side goes, this is how he killed someone. And we go, oh, fuck, that's horrible. Like That's not how you can convince someone. You need to at least understand the terrible thing that he did to be able to reach a point where you can go, well, we should be better than that, right? Another thing was like, uh, what what was fucking, it is, it is very weird that the Trump administration seems to be pushing through a bunch of executions before he leaves office. Like, oh, let's get this shit done. We've been, meaning, we've, been, we've been meaning to do it. Like it's a few, you know, executive orders or like, oh, let's give these benefits to these people. Let's get these things done. And while we're at it, let's kill as many people as we can. It seems a little bit fucking weird. I don't like that at all. Um, but what they are doing, what they are doing is the, the Trump administration is like, have been trying to avoid the, the racist thing by arranging their executions very specifically. I don't have the exact numbers, but from what I read, they, they've done like five white people executions. Uh, first, they're chucking a few brown people in the middle and then they're ending the final execution of their administration is going to be a woman. Uh, I, I, maybe the first woman ever. I'm not sure, but it is a woman. I know that. And... What blew my mind reading this is like, oh, Trump's doing these executions like uh, ABC organizes a comedy gala, you know? You got your white people up front, 
but we don't really talk about them too much. We make a big deal out of the like the brown headliners, and then we finish it off a real progressive choice, a woman as the headliner. Like it really does read like an ABC comedy night. You know, few white guys at the start, get them out of the way because we have to have them. Uh, then we go, man, check out these guys in the middle. Our progressive choices, and then bang, a headliner, a woman. Check that out right to close the night. That's progressive, you know. They're really organizing it like it's a fucking ABC comedy night. It's incredible. I don't like that, you know? I don't like the idea of rushing a bunch of executions at the end of your fucking term, and I don't like arranging them in a way that will get you the least bad press. To, press. to me, that screams you kind of know what you're doing's wrong. If you have to arrange the activity that you're doing in a way that is like by race so that you don't look like it's a bad thing. It might just be a bad thing that you're doing, bro. Maybe you shouldn't do it. I'm going to get in trouble for that one. I should have saved that for the Patreon podcast, which by the way is coming out after this. I'm going to do a few emails here, uh, wrap up, and then I'm just going to continue on with some uh, emails for the Patreon only edition. If you want to support me, if you want to get early access to all the videos that I do, join the Discord server, early access to tickets, discount on merch, and now uh, once a week, an extra episode of Spearhead Sundays every single week uh, from now, uh, then join the Patreon for however much money you want. It's only a couple of bucks. So you can do that. Let's open up the emails again. I think last episode... Uh, I read one email that was so fucking poorly worded that I cracked it and just didn't do any more emails. So I'm actually, uh, I'm actually really stocked up here, which is fucking great. So if you would like to send uh, an email to uh, the podcast, just shoot it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. I'm actually, I've got a new fucking, oh my God, fuck you. I've got a new phone. That's not what I wanted to do. I got the new iPhone and it's, incredible i really fucked up getting with two years ago getting the small one my hands are so fucking big i need the big one so i got the pro max and it is a beautiful phone dude um the selfie camera is incredible the the, that that photo that i posted of me like on the gym bench that was a fucking iphone photo that shit looks like it was taken by a dslr with studio lighting it's fucking really nice um which I imagine none of you fucking Android cunts would know anything about. Oh, actually, the camera's better. Cool, bro. Do it on Instagram. Post a selfie. I can't fucking log in. Really not good to be um, trashing Android cunts when you can't even log into your own email. No, I forgot my password. It's not an iPhone issue. I just don't know what my password is. Let's have a bloody look here. I've got it on my laptop. There we go. It works on my MacBook. It's not an Apple problem. It's a brain problem with me. Okay. Here we go. Irresponsible with money. (laughs) Uh, I love this. I don't know if I can help you very much, mate, but I will try my best. Hey, Lewis. I know how much you love fucking with people, and I hope you get a laugh out of this. My partner and I went for a home loan. Oh, congratulations, mate, buying a home. That's very big. No, I don't want to start World of Warcraft for fuck's sake. Why would I hit that button? Great. Now we're going to hear the fucking, oh my God. Irresponsible with money. My partner and I went for a home loan and as, as, and as the loan assessor read over our bank statements, he asked why I had money come out each fortnight. I explained that I paid in advance on my bills and we carried on. We then switched to the new bank who our loan was with. In doing so, I had to change all of the direct debits that came, to, came out to suit. This is when I realized we were saving $50 somewhere and I realized what it was. When that clown thing was happening a few years back, some kid put his address on Facebook and and so to fuck with him, I loaded a prepaid credit card and paid for a monthly subscription of stationery, paperclips, staples and a ream of paper to get sent to his house with to the residents as the recipient. I cracked up laughing as this was happening until we changed banks years later, my partner didn't think it was very funny, as funny, claiming that I was wasting money on stupid stuff. Now, I have no idea if this family moved or anything, but it meant that that address was still getting the subscription as the money was still coming out. 
Hope it taught him not to put his address on social media. Love your shit, Zach. That is so fucking funny, Zach. <laughs> you were sending this cunt fifty dollars worth of paper clips for years. I would have moved house. That's so funny, man. That's like me when I realized I was still pay paying for like my brother's Stan subscription, except he was watching the shows and getting enjoyment out of that. You were sending paper clips to a stranger's fucking house for years. That is absolutely hilarious. Thank you, Zach. Great email. Fuck, that's funny. What a good way to mess with someone. Um, where are we? I need help terror terrorizing my neighbor ASAP. This will be the last email, and then I'll do a few more for the Patreon episode. Hey, Lewis, my name is John. Uh, long story short, I live in a shitty town in Nordic Europe in an old apartment building. It turns out the walls, all the floor, are pretty much made out of paper and my downstairs neighbor has been on purpose listening to my Discord calls. I found out about this a while ago when I was going to bed. I actually heard him loudly talking to, talking to his friends and my shit posts in a pretty rude way. Apparently I'm a retard, etc., there is some truth to this since I've listened to every miscellaneous bit in the end since the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, that'll do it. A while ago, I found out that this guy works at the same place as me, but he does different stuff here. I'm pretty sure he's been talking shit about me to some of my co-workers since they have been acting really weird for a while now. Ever since I heard him talking about me to his friend, he's been avoiding me at work and never even makes eye contact. I'm pretty sure that he knows that I know. I'm pretty mad at this guy since it's very rude to talk shit about someone, even though you'd, you'd think they would never hear it. Not going to let this one slide. That's good. No slide season. And I would like to teach him a lesson to make this world a better place. So here comes the fun part. I'm actually moving. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's drop the nuke. That's good because you're in a dangerous spot. If you fuck with him too much, you might get fired. But, you know, if, he's, if you're moving, who cares? I'm actually moving to another town in another month or so. I can't get evicted from my current apartment since I'm leaving at the end of the month anyway. I am never coming back to this town and I'm never seeing this guy again, so I don't care about consequences or what he thinks about me. I basically have a full month uh, to fuck with this guy. What could I do to terrorize him the most? I've thought of some things like purchasing 10 alarm clocks and setting the alarm in the middle of the night at 15 minute intervals, playing death metal every day at full volume, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., maybe even calling local religious institutions and asking them to visit and convert me. But honestly, I think these options are pretty lame and would like to hear your advice on the matter. I know you're the expert on these types of things and love fucking with people. Money is not a problem. Patreon supporter, by the way. Legend, thank you very much. What a king. And like I said, I don't care about consequences unless I end up in jail. Good caveat there. Have a shit one. Yeah, look, John, I think you need to get this man's address to the man who has $50 a week to spare. He saved that money. Now he can send him paper clips. No, I don't think doxing him is, is the right thing to do. That's a bad thing to do. What you can do, piss in a plate, freeze it, Remove the frozen disc of urine, slide it under his door. It'll melt and then he'll have a puddle of mystery piss on his floor. That's a good one. I've said that one before on the podcast. But it's, it's hard because you don't want to fuck with other people. You live in an apartment building. You don't really want to punish other people for this guy's mistake. However, you do work with him. I mean, what you can do is you could lodge a complaint. What you could do is somehow delete all of his personal files. That could fuck with him in the work computer. What you could do... Okay, here is something that I wish I did. I wish I did this. I remember one time I worked at a bank, and I think I've told this story before, so I will shorten it. I worked at a bank, and I was fired for a very unjust reason because I kept asking questions about unfair treatment and promises that they, that they gave us that, that were never delivered upon. I remember this. And I was definitely fired for an unjust reason. It's the only job that I've been fired for a bullshit reason. All of the other jobs, I mean, you know me. 
I'll tell you when I fucked up. I've been fired for most of the time, very just reasons, and I've quit for very unjust reasons. This is the one time I was fired for a bullshit reason from a job I kind of tolerated that was paying me good money, and I really regret not doing this. And this would only really work in like probably a job situation. This is how you do it. What you need to do is find out whoever this guy's manager is, whoever this guy's subordinate is, whoever this guy's frequent point of contact is, whichever person or persons that he has, this guy has to talk to every day to do his job properly. And what you should do is you should go to that person and find out something that they are probably very insecure about. For me, it was my manager's very hairy lip. She had a very hairy lip and everyone noticed it, but no one said anything because we knew she would fucking explode. Now, what I wanted to do was when her and her boss fired me for a bullshit made-up reason, what I really should have done was gone, look, if I'm getting fired anyway, I might as well just tell you this. Um, Sarah has been talking shit to me and so many other employees that are under you, manager, Michelle, about your mustache, and she laughs about it all the time. She even goes like this sometimes when she's talking about you. And because I don't work here anymore, I think it's kind of bullshit. I really like you. So I thought I would let you know that Sarah talks shit about your mustache. And even if she didn't, even if she denies it, it doesn't matter what's true. That would have fucking crippled their relationship to the point where they would have had to move to move departments. It would have fucked it completely. If you just tell someone an absolute bullshit lie, drop a nuke about their biggest insecurity and say that this guy has been making fun of it, not only to me, but to all of your other subordinates, people that are supposed to look up to you, bro, you will completely and permanently fracture that personal business relationship with that person. Now, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll be the first one to say, that's a terrible thing to do and you shouldn't do it. But I'll also be the first person to say, Fuck, it works. I know that shit would have worked, and I regret not doing that every fucking day. You don't have to say it to them. You can even do it via the, a, an anonymous note. Type it up, print it out at home, fucking drop it on a few people's desks. Actually, not a few people, because if it's a few different people, and and, and then those three people find out that um, they all got the same note, they'll probably work out that it's bullshit and malicious from someone else. You can't, it will only really work if you do it to one person. So you really got to pick your target wisely. Someone that has a fucking weird birthmark on their head. Someone that's gained a lot of weight recently. You really need to pick your target well and just drop that note. And then say, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to talk to HR, but I really think you need to know that this person is saying these things about you and I think it's bad and everyone laughs about it, but I really like you. So I thought I would stand up for you. You can do with this information as you will. And at the very least, even if this person doesn't get in trouble because there's essentially no evidence, at the very least, it will completely fuck their relationship with their boss or their uh, subordinate. Either one's great. And that's awesome. So that's your nuke. Use wisely. I gave you the nuclear codes. You don't have to use it. In fact, I would recommend not using it. But you have the codes. And I'll just let you know that I regret not turning that key. Um, thank you very much, guys. That's the end of uh, the uh, the free version. Uh, I'm going to continue on here, do a few more emails. I'll, uh, I'll read off some of the subject line. If you want to support me on Patreon for any amount, uh, you can do so and join the Discord server and get early access to my content. Uh, the three videos that I dropped this week were dropped a day early on Patreon. Um, so let's see. What, we, what have we got here? I have a guy at work sexually harassing my girlfriend, banger. Um, and, oh, this is good, from a lady. Uh, almost threesome. Now we're all in the same class. Okay. Those two bangers, I'm going to do them in the Patreon version. Uh, for all of you freeloaders, uh, I appreciate you nonetheless. Uh, but if you can find it in the kindness of your heart to support me on Patreon and fund what I do, uh, we got hit hard by COVID. Uh, we're coming back, but your support is, uh, is, uh, appreciated and needed. Have a great Christmas. I'll talk to you guys next week. Uh, until then, I hope you have a fucking shit one. See you on Patreon.